Back on the zone, we're still with the Vice President of the West Indies Cricket Board, who is a little incensed at remarks made by the Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the Honorable Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, uh, made yesterday calling for the removal of the uh, current President of the West Indies Cricket Board, uh, uh, Dave Cameron, and his Vice President, Manin Anthon, as you would expect, uh, defending his uh, President stoutly. But to be fair here now, uh, Manny, when Dave was here on the zone a few days ago, he conceded that the restructuring of West Indies cricket and uh, his administration has been behind the eight ball uh, based on what the projection was and tidying up certain things and so on. And I think uh, Prime Minister Gonzalez is really incensed by the latest turn of events, not only the, the Indian uh, cricket uh, abandoned tour, but also what has been viewed as victimization of key players in the team to the World Cup because of the stance taken in India. What's your well, response you know what? to that? My response to that, I have been on the, on the board for the last 10 years, I have said earlier. I have never once seen a team come to the board that asked the board to ratify the team. On every occasion, when it comes to the board, it says the selectors have selected the following 14 or 15 men or women, the board is asked to note the team and ratify the captain and or vice captain. So we give His Excellency Courtney Walsh and Clive Lloyd, distinguished men uh, of the Caribbean, distinguished men in the Caribbean cricket world, to pick the team. We do not ask them or tell them who to pick. They are the ones who go out and who pick the team. So Clive Lloyd, Courtney Walsh, Ellen Baptist, and Courtney Brown went out and selected the team. We cannot change the team. And I have never seen in my 10 years at the board level, the board asking the selectors to change a team. In fact, I well, recall... to be fair, Vice President, this is, a, this is a different situation. Um, there may not have been a need for it in the past, but this is clearly a different situation involving these two players who were seen as leaders of the uh, Indian, the withdrawal from the Indian tour. This is slightly different. Yes, and, and also the West Indies selectors have been known in the past to recommend a captain and the board says, no, we don't want that captain and a change is made. So yeah, there is precedence for the board stepping in when a selection recommendation uh, doesn't concur with their view. But you recall I mentioned earlier on that the board appoints the captain. When Darren Sami, it was recommended to change Darren Sami, there was a serious uh, riff on the board. I think most of the cabinet will be aware of that. The selector said, uh, our person is Darren Bravo. Dwayne. That's what it says at the time. Dwayne. And even though it was the prerogative of the board to appoint the captain, the board had to eat humble pie and say, well, you know, the selector was, it's us. We select the, the selectors. So the board had to go on with the selectors, even in the condition where the board felt one way or uh, other rather than, and than another. But in the case of the team, I have never seen a member of the team have been asked to be changed by the board. We, we had issue with the, selector, with, the, with the selectors on the captain, not on the team. So you didn't find it shocking that Bravo was left out of the team, Bravo in particular? Well, in, in my last 20 years of being involved in cricket, from uh, the village level in, in Dominica to uh, as an auto director on the ICC, I have learned uh, over the last 20 years to leave issues of selection for selectors. I am, I am responsible for policy. If the selectors do something and I am not pleased with it, it's my responsibility to change the selectors. And that's what uh, I do, or that has, has been uh, my modus operandi over the last 20 years uh, in administration of cricket. The selectors are there to do a job. Clive Lloyd, a distinguished uh, son of cricket from the Caribbean. Uh, Courtney, Courtney Walsh, his excellency Courtney Walsh, a distinguished servant of Caribbean cricket. Courtney Brown has been selected for the last, what, 10 years uh, or six or eight. And Ellen Baptist, who just came back as a professional, uh, very much involved in the game, have been given the responsibility. And that is theirs. I do not cross thread with that. If I'm not satisfied with what they do, when the time comes, I do what I have to do. And I will tell them that straight forward. Yeah. Uh, Manny Nanton, when the, the team is selected, as you said, you, you, you play no part in that. But let's go back uh, to an earlier point I made about the administration of West Indies cricket. Because you know the average man in the Caribbean is very disillusioned with the performance of the West Indies Cricket Board ad administrators. You started out uh, this, this evening by praising the work of Cameron and uh, 
you know, complementing the work done with the board and revising and the franchise and so on. But do you, do you feel in your heart of hearts that the average man on the street is convinced that the West Indies Cricket Board's administrative performance is any better now than it was four years ago, five years ago, and during the past decade or so when they were very, very heavily criticized for messing up West Indies cricket? Well, I think uh, there's still a large number of, uh, a large percentage of members in, in, in the public that are disenfranchised because of the performance of the team on the field. But I believe that the people are seeing the work forward is to train your young players, put them on contracts, have them working hard, hard for them working all year long, and that we will improve. I believe if that, that debacle did not happen in India, we are well on the way to improving. I still believe that we are well on the way to, way to improving. I never expected the results to come through in one year or in two years, but I'm quite sure with what we have put in place in terms of the franchise uh, for the players, putting the players on contract to let them work every day as they do now in Windsor Park and Dominica from the Windward Islands, then uh, the results will show and will bear fruit around the Caribbean and will show on the, field, on the team, on the field of play in the next two or three years. It will not happen in, uh, in one year. It will not happen in one day or in six months. And really and truly, we will see it when we go out to the communities around the Caribbean. Cricket for the West Indies doesn't come from, from like manna from heaven. They come from the village, the villages around the Caribbean, from the small fields all around the Caribbean. And that's what we want. That's, what, that's where they come from. And that's where we have to improve. So when I go out and I see my young men in Dominica now at Windsor Park, with coaches, with physiotherapists, with managers working all year long, I can see, yes, these guys are working hard. And I expect that the results will come forward. And I expect that the fruits will, uh, will be for, for West Indies cricket in the next two or three years. I just want you to reiterate something you said for me. The West Indies selectors that you've already mentioned pretty much announced a new departure for West Indies cricket with Clive Lloyd saying that he wanted to give some of these young players uh, a look in, that some of the established players have been um, around uh, over our decline to number eight in test cricket and one day international cricket. Are you saying and, 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 that and the board? Know, are you saying that the board of directors, in seeing this departure from the norm or this change in direction by the selectors, would not have questioned that direction? Of course. In fact, the board called in the selectors uh, into a meeting and discussed with them, tell them that uh, there are some things that we are concerned about, and the selectors explained themselves. And uh, it's their job to. Uh, it's their job to. So you help called us in the selectors. It, you, you, call, yes, you say yes, you don't uh, interfere on one hand, and now you're saying you called in the selectors to explain themselves. No, sorry. The selectors, are, as I'm saying, are the ones to pick, to pick the team and go forward. We have a director of, of cricket. We have, we have a, uh, a, an efficient selection panel. Uh, at times, if you have questions, then we call them in and, and, we, ask, and we, we ask questions. But not on who they pick or who they did not pick. And neither do we give them any direction on who to pick or who, or who not to pick. And of course, you won't blame the selectors or fault them when they tell you, you know, we have been at number eight and someone is number nine for the last how many years, and we want to ensure that we do what we need to do to move forward. I'm sure you, uh, there's logic in that. I, I just sure want to make sure that you said you called in the selectors, and, and I'm curious as what you wanted to find out from them. No, there are times I'm said that we discuss with the selectors on general policy, uh, on, on, on their vision, how, how, where they look at Western cricket and where they want to move. And what are the, the, the things that they want that they want to get involved in? So we have these general chats and discussions. We do it sometimes through the director of the reserve bus. So we need to ask questions. We need to, we need to know and we, uh, we need to understand. And when we have questions, then we ask them questions. Mm. But it remains the fact remains that the selection of the team is the prerogative of the of the selectors. And uh, we do not tell the selectors who to pick. And when they pick, pick the team, we do not go back to them and tell them, well, change that person or that person. All right. Okay. Um, we're, we're, we're kind of out yeah. of time, but I just wanted to put one quick question to you there. The uh, board issued a press release this afternoon saying that they are engaging the ICC to assist in resolving the India situation with the U.S. 42 million um, being demanded. Uh, is there any hope from the West Indies Cricket Board standpoint that the ICC may be able to help here? I think, I think we, we are very hopeful. Uh, we have been in discussion with the ICC and with the India Cricket Board as well. And uh, I think we are very hopeful that something will happen. In fact, President Cameron is now in Dubai at an ICC meeting and discussion continues. So discussion continues and, and uh, we are very hopeful and we're very upbeat that things uh, will go the way that we expect it to go. All right, uh, Emmanuel uh, Nantan, I want to ask, thank you for joining us on Skype here on The Zone. Thank you for having me. All Good right, uh, Vice President of the WICB. We're going to take a short break. Um, latest score?
<laughs> Still one love to Chelsea in the second semi-final uh, or the replay final of the um, League One Cup. We take a break. Back in a minute.